What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Jake Purely. I'm a professional cinematographer and colorist. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at three simple color grading tips that are gonna up your grading game in DaVinci Resolve. The first tip we're gonna look at is how to know your contrast every time on every shot. The second is gonna be the difference between parallel mixer and a layer mixer and when to use each one. And then the third and final tip we're gonna look at today is how to fix that gamma shift from your export not looking the same way it did when you were grading it in Resolve. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell notification, and let me know in the comments what kind of video and tutorials you guys want to see next. Let's hop into today's video. Super excited to be doing this three tips in DaVinci Resolve to help you grade better and faster. So first up is going to be how to get proper contrast. There are several different tools built into Resolve to help you get the perfect contrast. Most commonly known is the curves. You also have your primary wheels, which is your lift, gamma, and gain, respectively your shadows, midtones, and highlights. You've also got your log wheels, which are a more precise modification of your shadows, midtones, and highlights. And then you also have contrast and pivot. Contrast and pivot, let's take a look at how those two tools work using this gradient image here. Keep an eye on the waveform down here in the right hand corner. Look what happens whenever I increase contrast. We start to see that S curve being created. And then by moving pivot, we change the center point of that S curve. Now keep that in mind as we jump back into our image and let's start playing around with some other tools. So let's add some contrast to get started, not too much. Let's adjust our pivot. I wanna keep some contrast in those midtones. So I'm gonna turn this up some. I like where the midtones are sitting. Now let's go ahead and fix our shadows and highlights that are blown out and a little bit crushed. Let's pull up on the lift, down on our gamma, and let's pull down on our gain as well. Let's go back up on gamma. It's all just a balancing act. You're gonna be jumping back and forth a whole lot here. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I like where it's sitting. You can see we're not crushing any of the shadows. We're also not blowing out any highlights. So that's my preferred method of adding contrast is just work with the contrast and pivot tools and then go in and modify and make some final tweaks with your lift, gamma, and gain. Now what you don't wanna do is pull this way too far, crush those shadows and highlights and start that look a little too early because then as you go on down the road and you keep making adjustments, that image is just gonna to start to fall apart and it's gonna break. So as I'm building the look for an image, I like to work on building the grade before I go in and add the final contrast. I don't want it to be crushed early on. I wanna leave it open just a little bit so I can make modifications and tweak the image and then come in and dial in the final contrast later on. Whether that's less contrast or more contrast, leaving it a little bit open early on gives me all the room to work with in the middle of the process. So let's jump into one more clip here. We're going to apply the same technique to this clip. However, we're going to introduce one more thing. Before we start adding contrast, we want to bring the exposure and the waveform generally to about the middle. So to do that, we're going to be using offset. And if you have a control surface, you can just press that offset button in the middle there. And then the far right wheel is going to be controlling your offset. That's going to be bringing that down. If you don't have a control surface, don't worry. You can just use the tool right here, offset, and pull this slider back. We're going to put it roughly in the center, but though it is a bright image, we're going to leave it a little bit higher. So I like where that's at now. Let's go ahead and add contrast and pivot. And like I said before, we don't wanna blow out the highlights or crush the blacks. So this is looking pretty good right about there. We'll go in and work some more with our lift, gamma, and gain. Bring down the lift, up on the gamma, and then up on the gain a little bit, and then we'll add some saturation. So even though this is a much flatter image and it's shot on a red cinema camera, all the same principles still apply. So one thing you might be noticing I'm mentioning a lot is keeping those shadows and highlights protected, keeping them from being blown out. There's a couple ways to do that though, because honestly with a lot of digital cameras, they don't quite have the dynamic range that film cameras do. If you want dynamic range like this, you're gonna have to invest in something like RED, Canon, Ari. But one way to fake that high dynamic range in an image like this that's shot on a drone is two simple tools. One is gonna be your high soft, which we see down here in the curves. We're just gonna pull this up a little bit. And that's just gonna soften out the very top of the highlights of the image. And you can see it's kind of doing its job, but it's still leaving the high end a little bit flat. Another tool, if you go over here in your primaries, click two, your highlights right here. This is also gonna do a great job of bringing down the highlights without just completely flattening out the image. It's gonna do it pretty smoothly. Then if we go back and do our gain and we bring that up, it does a pretty good job of it. And then shadows does the same thing, just in the opposite direction. Okay, now let's take a look at the difference between parallel nodes and layer mixer nodes. So you can create a parallel node by starting off on a clean node and then pressing Alt P 
and that's going to automatically add one node and then add a parallel mixer with a second input. So parallel nodes and parallel mixers are best for blending. What they're going to do is this mixer right here is going to take any adjustments made to these two nodes, blend them together regardless of the order they're in, and then output it as a single output to the next node. This is great if you wanted to build looks by stacking, you know, say you want to push red into the highlights and then blue into the midtones and shadows. And then we can further complement that by using our log wheels, pulling down the shadows and then balancing out the shadows maybe tweaking the highlights a little more. So you can see this parallel mixer has blended the adjustments we've made in each of these nodes, whereas a layer mixer is gonna stack them. So let's take a look at what that does. If we delete these, we delete this node and let's create a new serial node and then add a layer mixer. The bottom node here, which is the lower input, is gonna be stacked on top of the top node. So it's kind of flip-flop, but Let's take a look at how this works. Now because this node is layered on top of this one, let's disable it now for the sake of being able to see the adjustments we're making to node 3. So just for example's sake, let's push red and orange into the highlights and then blue into the shadows and midtones. And then let's go into our bottom node, which is going to be layered on top. You can see now we can't see any changes here. So say we wanted to stack the red on top of the blue we just did. Let's go ahead and qualify our reds here. And a cleaner way to do this, especially when you're working with 8-bit footage, is don't go in and grab your own key. Go over here into color, and then presets, and let's choose 6-vector red. Those 6-vector presets are going to lead to much cleaner keys, especially when working with lower bit footage like 8-bit and 10-bit. So now if we disable that highlight, we see the difference that's making. Let's turn off this node and see what it was before. And now we can see that any qualification we have in node 5 is being stacked on top of the adjustments we made in node 3. So like I said, the layer mixer is perfect for isolating and stacking. Uh, parallel mixer is better for blending all the adjustments. You want to be super careful though not to overdo this because layer mixers can be a dead giveaway of working with noisy footage or footage that isn't necessarily shot super well. Um, you can't just grab anything and start working with it. Typically it's going to lead to a much more noisy image and you're going to see that that qualifier you've pulled doesn't really hold up throughout the entirety of the clip. Okay, last final tip of the day, and I get this question all the time. That is, how come when I export my footage from Resolve, it doesn't look how it did when I was grading it? Super simple fix. It's nothing to do with your export settings. It's nothing to do with your computer. It is a super simple fix, and we're going to take a look at that right now. All right, so let's hop into the deliver page here, give it a name, give it a location. Let's scroll down and go over a couple key settings. I'm going to go ahead and set this restrict to, it's preset to 80,000 kilobits a second. We're just going to set it to 35,000. And then let's scroll down a little more and make sure these two are always checked. So what these two do, force sizing and force debayer to highest quality, that's going to make sure that even though this is a 1080p timeline, the clip here is shot in 5K. So when it's rendering it, Resolve is going to reference the 5K file versus the 1080p resolution that the timeline is in. So always make sure these two are checked. We're going to add it to the render queue and let's render it out. All right, great. So that's done. Let's hop into the file. Let's open it up in QuickTime and yeah, it doesn't quite look the same. It's much more saturated and it's much more contrasty. It does not look how we graded it in Resolve. So the reason for that has got nothing to do with your computer, nothing to do with your hardware, not even your monitor. The reason it's doing that, especially if you're on a Mac, is that your Mac has a built-in color profile and it's a slightly different gamma than Rec. 709, which is what we exported the video in. So the way to get rid of that or bypass it on a Mac is to right click, open with VLC Media Player. Now comparing QuickTime Player to the left and VLC Media Player to the right, you'll see that VLC is displaying the image exactly how we had it graded in Resolve. The reason for that is that VLC intentionally bypasses the built-in color profile from your Mac and doesn't add this, this weird gamma shift that QuickTime does. So like I said, it's nothing to do with how you're viewing it, it's nothing to do with your hardware, it's just that QuickTime overlays this matte color profile and VLC does not. So anytime you're reviewing your footage um, or you're, you're reviewing your exports to make sure that everything looks good, never view it in QuickTime. Always make sure it's in VLC. So just like that, we learned how to correctly add contrast to our images, the differences between a parallel mixer and a layer mixer, and when to use each one. And then lastly, how to fix that gamma shift when exporting out of Resolve. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.